Welcome to Taste of Life, an interactive travel series for the gourmet in us all. Today's Epicurean Odyssey takes us into the heart of British Columbia, the Okanagan Valley. Canada's westernmost province has a blossoming wine culture. The valley dominating its interior has long been at the forefront of developing wines that reflect the soil, climate, and outlook of the region. Today, Taste of Life journeys along the Okanagan Valley's Golden Mile. It's a treasure trove of vineyards nestled beneath the hills and drawing on the valley's extraordinary climate to produce wines with extraordinary character. Okanagan wines owe just as much to the character of the pioneering vintners in the valley, and we hear what the experts believe is the essence of great Okanagan Valley wines. It's a barrel of fascination at the only cooperage in Western Canada. And then we're off for a tasting at our featured Okanagan Valley vineyard, Tinhorn Creek. There, Sarah Oldfield, Tinhorn Creek's vintner, shares with us the challenges of winemaking. And we'll also meet her husband, Ken Oldfield, the vineyard's general manager. Join Taste of Life at Tinhorn Creek Vineyard's celebration of the grape harvest pairing their wines with Vancouver executive chef Scott Kidd's specialties of the harvest season. The menu for the winemaker's dinner features smoked trout with a dahlia tuber salad and a trio of venison with a celery root gratin and a salad of wild mushrooms, squash and currants. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Catherine Blythe, and today on Taste of Life, we have a secret to share with you. Nestled in the interior of British Columbia, under what are technically desert conditions, is a blossoming wine industry where new world vines and old world experimentation unite in a promise of a unique viticultural experience and a unique culinary experience. This is not the scenery associated with the damp and leafy Pacific Northwest. The Okanagan Valley is only hours from Vancouver or Seattle, but it's over the mountains and worlds away from their coastal climate. A scant six inches of rain falls every year. It's Canada's only real desert. That incredible climate flavors its wines and contributes to the popularity of one of BC's largest tourism destinations. The Okanagan is blessed with an unbelievable climate. Uh, lots of lakes, uh, lots of sunshine, and uh, grapes are just an extra really good reason to put it on your list to come here. About 50% uh, of all the grapes in BC that make premium wine are within 15 or 20 minutes of where we're standing right now growing. Okanagan Valley is British Columbia's largest and oldest wine producing region, but like a fine wine, it's undergoing a maturing process too. In the 1980s, the province's vineyards invested in a replanting program with only the best European varieties. That investment has paid off many times, especially as it helped draw new people with fresh perspective to the wine industry. The new vintners shared with established winemakers a devotion to high-quality, world-class wine development. We've got winemakers that have come from a number of different countries, and they've brought their, their ideas and philosophies, and they've shared them. And uh, I, I don't think we're ever going to see what I would call a, a typical Okanagan style of anything. Now, more than 4,000 acres of vines thrive in the arid Okanagan soil. The combination of climate, the finest European vines, and a willingness to experiment results in wines with a distinct identity. The fresh fruit qualities, what the soil, what the weather has to bring, they don't, don't try to mask it with anything else, which is kind of unique. Today, the order of the day is flavor, flavor, flavor with more intensity. The finishing touch of flavor in wine comes from the barrel in which it's aged. The Okanagan Barrel Works is the only cooperage in Western Canada providing support to wine estates in the Okanagan and across the border. Cooper Cal Craig 
repairs and rejuvenates barrels, retoasting them to free the flavor to meld with delicately aging wines. Wine tours to well-known estates like Sumac Ridge and Burrowing Owl are part of the great appeal of any visit to the Okanagan Valley. Our featured estate also welcomes connoisseurs to its spectacular site. Tinhorn Creek Vineyards is located on the hillside of the Gold Mile in the southern Okanagan Valley. All its wines are produced exclusively from Tinhorn's own estate grapes, making the vineyard unique among BC wineries and immensely popular among wine lovers. From vine to bottle, the entire process of winemaking is on display at Tinhorn Creek. Their stunning state-of-the-art winery is designed with the curious visitor in mind. Half a dozen wines are underway at any given time, and although the vintner's arts are often shrouded in mystique, the processes at Tinhorn Creek are open for wine tourists to see and be dazzled. Tinhorn Creek is eager to share its passion for wonderful wines with those of similar mind. California-trained Sandra Ofield thrives on creating excellent wines in the Okanagan Valley. Up here, you're, you're fighting all kinds of uh, weather problems. Um, the composition of the grapes is different. Your growing season's different, your winters. So I just find it's much more challenging, and I like that because you have to use your, your brain a lot more. Since its first vintage less than a decade ago, Tinhorn Creek has been at the forefront of developing award-winning Okanagan wines that hint of the great wines to come out of the Okanagan in the future. And one of their most decorated is their prestigious ice wine. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we've picked the right uh, grape variety uh, with the Kerner. And, um, and I think part of it is just the fact that we don't really know a lot about making ice wine, so we don't follow the traditional rules that you have to um, use this type of yeast or do it this way. We've never really learned that coming from California, I haven't, so we just do it our own way and it's really paid off for us. Ice wine grapes are left on the vine long after the leaves disappear to maximize the sweetness of the grape. The art of fine ice wine is all in timing leaving the grapes on the vine until temperatures go well below freezing without losing too many to birds, animals, or gravity. Our uh, unofficial mission statement is to have fun, make wine, and make money doing it. Uh, but the first part is have fun. And, and every day we're having fun. Up next, executive chef Scott Kidd creates two dishes for Tinhorn Creek's winemaker's dinner. The capital of the food culture in British Columbia is Vancouver, that cosmopolitan city where East meets West draws on both influences, and healthy competition in its thriving restaurant scene means there's an ever-rising level of expectations of both excellence and innovation. One of Vancouver's most popular restaurants gives us a window into Pacific Northwest cuisine. It's the Rain City Grill with executive chef Scott Kidd. The Rain City Grill is the ideal restaurant to team up with Tinhorn Creek Vineyards for a harvest winemaker's dinner. The restaurant made a name for itself as a champion of British Columbia wines and was one of the first in Vancouver to offer exclusively BC wines to its patrons. They're a perfect complement to the restaurant's menu, featuring produce, game, and seafood indigenous to the province. Uh, I think we like to think of Rain City Grill as, um, as an urban, regional bistro. Uh, we try to do dishes which reflect our seasons, as well as our producers uh, from, from British Columbia in particular. And uh, we like to see that the dishes re also reflect a certain natural naturalism that I think BC is uh, well known for. Local products plus a creative approach to cuisine and masterful presentation make Rain City a perennial success. 
For Tinhorn Creek's winemaker's dinner, executive chef Scott Kidd follows the same formula, making contact with specialty producers for the local ingredients that will showcase the Okanagan flavor of Tinhorn Creek's wines. Our first specialty recipe for the winemaker's dinner is smoked trout with a dahlia tuber salad. For a free copy of this exclusive recipe, visit our website or call us toll free. So what we'll do is we'll quickly uh, just grill the potato first and the trout. This process should take only two or three minutes just to get the elements hot. We're going to close the lid because it's going to take a little while to cook in these conditions. It's a little bit cold out here. Um, meanwhile, while, that, while this is happening, uh, we're going to make the, the dahlia tuber salad. And the dahlia tuber is kind of an interesting product. It's from uh, Vancouver Island. Uh, and uh, it's very reminiscent, I would say, of using like taro root or another starchy vegetable uh, like jicama. So what we've done with that is we've made a, uh, a raw brunoise, coarse brunoise of, of the uh, dahlia tuber. And we're going to toss that with some of these other ingredients very simply. Uh, what we're going to do is make a quick little dressing, just a little bit of rice wine vinegar in the bowl. A little bit of, uh, of a late harvest Seviano extra virgin olive oil. And we can use a little bit of fresh ground pepper. And just a pinch of uh, good sea salt. And these uh, scallions, which we've cut in a couple of different ways of julienne and just a um, uh, the sliced scallion. We're just gonna toss that those ingredients with a spoon. get ready and check our check our ingredients in here and see if they're actually cooking and so far so good looks like the trout is taking a little color the potatoes taking a little color too but they're gonna be a couple more minutes yet the other condiments we're going to be using today are radish sprouts here a horseradish cream and a beetroot oil which we prepared earlier today uh, the beetroot oil is slightly spicy we've added some chili spice to it and it's simply just an infusion of an infusion of uh, of the beet roots and and olive oil. Those will be our sauces for the dish. For plating, um, I, I recommend a sort of a destructured plating style. It's a very simple dish. It's not meant to be um, too elegant, and it sort of suits with our I think with our theme here today. We're in a, a, a very beautiful natural environment. We want the plates to look very natural. It's actually going to be a little bit of a test for how we're going to do the, the plates this evening. So we've got a little bit of color there. I'm just going to leave it another minute and soon everything will be ready. But in the meantime, I think what I'll do is I'll start playing with the, the plate design. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of the salad here initially, just as a hint. I'm going to take that little scallion off there. And I'm going to go to our grill again. We just have to warm through the, the trout because it is a hot smoked trout. And we just want to get a little bit of color. So you get a nice caramel color there. And a little bit of warmth through the, through the fish itself. I'm going to put the potato off center here, right there. And uh, I think I put on my salad there, the, the little piece of trout. It's a very simple little elegant dish. And I'm going to top garnish that with maybe a little bit more of our salad just to make another little hint at the at the ingredients there, just on top. And then I'm gonna garnish around that with some radish sprouts. These are nice little Japanese kaiwari, they're called. The radish sprouts on top there. And then we're gonna finish the dish with our two sauces, which marry nicely with the smoked fish. A horseradish cream, which is just an infusion of horseradish and thick cream. I'm just gonna drizzle that on the plate for one color. And then the second sauce for our dish today is going to be a little, that beetroot oil with a little bit of hint of spice in it. And we get a nice color on the plate like that. Two sauces. And there's our dish. On a brisk Okanagan day, we have hot smoked trout with a dahlia uh, tuber salad and Yukon gold, grilled Yukon gold potato. Tonight we're going to be serving that at Tinhorn Creek Winery with a 1998 Gewürztraminer. That's the dish. I hope you try it at home. If you want the recipes, let us know.
The winemaker's dinner will also feature a trio of venison with celery root gratin and a wild mushroom squash and currant salad. For a free copy of this exclusive recipe, visit our website or call us toll free. So to do this dish, what we want to do initially is just to quickly season the venison with salt and pepper and a little bit of olive oil for the grill. We've pre-prepared the celery root gratin ahead of time and so what we're going to use the, is the grill just to warm it through. So we're going to put that on the, on the staging rack of the barbecue here just to warm while we grill the venison trio. We have a trio here. We have loin, tenderloin, and chop. So we put that on the grill and we're going to cook those to a rare to medium rare. Meanwhile, we can also start grilling our mushrooms. We've got some interesting chanterelles here, two varieties of chanterelles, which we'll put in a little bowl. And we've got a, uh, a shimiji mushroom, a wild shimiji mushroom, which is also from Vancouver Island. And we're just gonna put those in, in the bowl, toss them with a little bit of olive oil again, and salt and pepper. Very simple preparations on the barbecue. We just put them on the barbecue to grill. We'll close the lid and hope that everything cooks right. After a little bit of cooking time on the barbecue, we can now start to assemble our, our wild mushroom salad. These mushrooms have been cooked through. We're gonna put them in our mixing bowl here. And we have some previously cooked kobucha squash here, which we've cut into small dice. We're gonna add that to the bowl. We have some currants that we've plumped up in a little bit of the Tinhorn Creek Merlot, which the, the dish will be married with later on this evening at the winemaker's dinner. We'll add a little bit of those. A little bit of fresh pepper and salt. And we're going to dress this particular salad with some um, Asian greens, which we have here, some red Osaka, some tatsoi, you can see the tatsoi, and, and some nasturtiums as well. These are microgreens, which are grown by a company called Barneson Island down in Vancouver. We brought them up with us. The oil we're going to use for this particular salad is a carrot root oil, which is a is a is derived from carrots um, under high pressure. So we're going to add a little bit of that into the dish. It's got a very strong carrot flavor, and it marries nicely with the celery root gratin. Back here, the celery root gratin is warmed through. We're going to place that on our on our serving dish and our venison is cooked well here to about medium rare. And we're gonna arrange those pieces of venison around the celery root gratin. Nice little trio of venison there. We're gonna just toss very lightly our salad greens and wild mushrooms together. And then we're gonna use our hands this time to place them on the plate to garnish the the dish. Again, a nice destructive presentation. I prefer that. Today we've also married this dish with a red wine jus based on the wine we're serving with the dish tonight with a little bit of cocoa added to it. There's your dish for the winemaker's dinner tonight. It's a trio of venison with a celery root gratin and a salad of wild mushrooms and kobucha squash and currants. Thanks a lot. When we come back, Tinhorn Creek Vineyard's winemaker's dinner. Join us. Tonight's winemaker's dinner pairs Rain City Grill dishes with Tinhorn Creek wines. We found some, uh, some nice fall produce that reflected sort of the earthy tones of, of the time of the year and, and we tried to incorporate that in a, in a natural setting here at the winery as well as a, on a natural presentation on the plate. Initially what we did is we're looking for textures and uh, primarily um, similarities between the wines and the foods and in some cases, contrasts. And uh, textures and uh, weight of the wine. Uh, we uh, started off with the Pinot Gris, which is a natural for British Columbia. 
and it uh, has a natural affinity for many of the seafoods. So we came up with the idea of doing a raw bar, incorporating our fresh local oysters and some albacore tuna sashimi and uh, smoked salmon and the like. They also do a wonderful Gewurztraminer. And Scott had an idea of combining smoked trout and a horseradish cream sauce. And that's the uh, primary components of the second dish. So the Gewurztraminer with its spiciness and just a hint of sweetness was a perfect complement to that. And then we jumped ahead a bit and we went right to the entree because venison is a, a natural uh, local dish that we do. And uh, the Merlot here is fabulous. It's really their benchmark wine, I think. So then we came to the dessert course and Tinhorn does a fabulous ice wine, a Kerner ice wine, which is very rich and sweet. And uh, so we've actually combined two desserts to accompany that. And uh, both of them being slightly less sweet than the, uh, the ice wine will be, so that the wine is always going to be the highlight of the dish. So that's how we came about the menu, and uh, we've got 40 people in the room tonight that are going to attest to the uh, success. Wild, fresh, robust, and dramatic. Words that describe not only the wines of the Okanagan Valley, but the setting itself. It's a place where visitors are free to explore some of North America's most striking landscapes and indulge in some of its most promising wines. For Taste of Life, I'm Catherine Blythe. See you again. Catherine Blythe's Wardrobe by Ross Meyer. Travel provided by Lincoln. The Lincoln Navigator is the official vehicle of Taste of Life. On location, we were guests of the Lakeside Resort in Oliver, British Columbia. For free recipes and copies of your favorite shows, visit us online at tasteoflife.com or call toll free 1 888 41 Taste.